Bowman here from BW1.com and it's time to give you my final review of the iPad 2. Now we actually have a written review already posted up at BW1.com by Dan Lorenko. The link will be in the description of that and we'll attach this video to that review and some pictures and some extra content as well so be sure to check that out. And also this review is going to be a little bit different. Now normally we go over hardware and design, software and usability and overall thoughts but this doesn't have too many differences from the original iPad so not to sound redundant from the original review because a lot of that stuff is still the same on the iPad side of things from the iPad 1 iPad 2 this video is really going to focus on the main changes, the significant changes from the original iPad one to save time and obviously two not to sound redundant so we'll start off here with the sort of the hardware design of it it's a lot thinner we did a full hardware tour in, in, first, in first impressions in our first impressions video and it feels nice in the hand. It, it, uh, the, the back of it feels a little slick, like it's going to fly out your hand, but it does have a good grip to it. It's comfortable. It's a lot lighter. I mean, that's not saying that the original iPad was that heavy, but you do notice that it's a lot lighter. And it's very thin, sort of on an e-reader style thin, like the Kindle or the um, Nook, sort of that type of thin, which is pretty cool. And it's still a tablet, so you still get all that tablet functionality. You're still going to get fingerprints on the screen. They're supposed to be using some type of technology that's supposed to reduce that, but I still see fingerprints. You can still see fingerprints even here in the video of it, so I wouldn't worry too much about that right now until they, until they find a way to really get fingerprints from getting on here. But um, other significant change is the cameras that they added onto it. You have a front and rear facing camera. We'll open up the camera application, which I find a little bit lacking. It's the same application that you get in other iOS devices, your iPhone or iPod Touch. I do wish it had all the you know the different color filters and features that you would that you get in a lot of other um, OS's sort of camera applications like in the Motorola Zoom. That's one way where it has all of it right in one particular application. Versus this, where if you want to get those effects, you have to go to another application like Photo Booth, which I'll show you what that looks like. Or you probably have to download some third-party application to get those type of features. Now, as far as video is concerned, video quality on this recording in 720p is really solid and looks really good actually. This is the rear facing camera. We'll focus on something there so you can see it. It's the rear facing and it's the front facing here. You just have to hit that button, swap just like that. The front facing camera doesn't really have that great of recording quality because the rear facing camera does do 720p recording. And we did upload a video of that, so be sure to check the video of the of the video quality from this. I definitely think it's good. I think it's better than its competitor on, on the Motorola Zoom. I definitely, definitely found the picture quality to be a little bit sharper, color seemed to be a little bit more correct, and the audio was just a little bit better. So definitely kudos to them on that. But on the picture side of things, as far as stills are concerned, the, the, the picture quality is, is just absolutely terrible. I, I, there really is no other way to put it. Pictures are grainy, they, they seem washed out, the colors don't seem to come out quite as sharp. Picture quality is terrible. Definitely in other tablets they have two and five megapixel pictures, like in the Motorola Zoom, the picture quality as far as stills are concerned are a lot better. And that's not saying that um I'll show you swapped on on that side, you can do the same thing in stills. But uh, that's not saying that um that you're mainly gonna be using this to take pictures, this is gonna replace digital camera, obviously not. But it feels like they just kind of threw the camera in here and you really didn't think about the quality, which is disappointing because you do want some time to have the ability to take a really good picture at a moment when you want to take one if you have the camera, even if you don't use it all the time. And the camera does work and the video does work in landscape. And if you're recording a video, be sure to, to record in this mode so that way you won't get the black bars on the side. And I'll um, show you the other app such as... Uh, photo booth here that gives you sort of those special effects and stuff like that you can see here it gives you the special effects which is pretty cool and, and all but um like I said you're not really taking great pictures with this so it really doesn't help with anything I mean you can just tap on an effect and it shows it right there just hit the camera button and bam there it is I wish this was integrated into the original camera application it does work for front and rear facing and I couldn't find where it could work with the video camera either which other um, OS's do have that available such as the Motorola Zoom I'm probably going to use that as sort of comparison in this review so you know that, that actually has that so I wish the camera app was just a little bit better and the camera itself was just a bit better but video recording is definitely good so if you're going to record any video on this it's going to come out pretty good um, as far as FaceTime is concerned, keep with the cameras, we did do a FaceTime video with Dan Lorenko, so definitely check that out. 
it was pretty good. Front facing camera looked good, and you can use the rear facing camera while in, in while in, while in a chat. Um, chat went smooth overall. I think it was a little bit smoother than Google Talk on the Motorola Zoom. Just a little bit smoother. Not as many sort of jerky hiccups and stuff like that. Audio quality was was pretty decent as well too. Um, app easy to use as what you expect. So that's definitely going to add in. Be sure to check out that video. Also in that video, you you. you You'll see it in there, but you can't multitask while you're in the middle of a uh, FaceTime chat. So if you're talking on FaceTime and you decide to close out, to close it out, and go to another one, the chat will still run, the audio will still run, but the video feed is on the other end until you go back to it. So hopefully they'll find a way to multitask that around at some point. As uh, far as overall OS uh, feel, feels very snappy. Apps load up real quick. You saw us load up some games and stuff like that. Let's just open up CNN. Seems like apps open up really quickly. Seems like it's, it's taking advantage of that dual core processor. Uh, it wasn't like the original iPad was that slow neither. So you know, take it for what it's worth. Hopefully, these apps will be able to will get developed and optimized for dual core. So they'll work a little bit snappy, a little bit faster. But like I said, it wasn't like the original one was really all that slow. Um, as far as battery life, battery life is tremendous on this. It says you get up to ten hours plus, and I've definitely exceeded that. I've been able to use it for three or four days on and off playing games, listening to a little bit of music, surfing the web, and it's definitely and it's definitely lasted. I haven't had to charge it or anything like that. So battery life is definitely superb on this device over any other tablet I would say out there. This, this Apple definitely has the battery life on point here, so that's definitely a thumbs up. Did do a separate video on gaming. Gaming was 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 solid as you would expect on the iPad. There's a ton of games. Games are fast, games are responsive, games use motion sensors out there. It, it, you know the most sense that's available it's definitely good so um check out the separate video that i did that on that as well too so you can see that as well where this really wins definitely is because of the itunes ecosystem the app store there's so many apps available for it already versus other uh oper mobile operating systems out there that's definitely a plus with this so that's an advantage definitely have to put that as a check mark for it and also, the ecosystem you can iTunes and and the App Store, all that sort of all in one thing right in here. It's already there and ready for you. So if you already have an iPod or something like that, which a lot of people have, you're gonna be able to have your content on here too. Your apps will work on here, either the mobile app or even you know obviously the tablet optimized app too will be on here. That's where sort of this wins. So if you're already in that ecosystem, you're probably gonna like having that. Definitely, definitely, this is definitely gonna work for you. If you're not in that yet, or if you look at something a little fresh, you might want to try another another device, like I said, like the Zoom or something like that. Because I do wish Apple would have sort of refreshed this interface. I think this is getting a little bit stale, and they really need to sort of step it up a little bit, give you a bit of a fresher interface while keeping the same basic stuff that they have here while it's working very solid and it's very easy to use. But add those features that other mobile platforms out there that have that are that are sort of one ups to what you have and put it into there so that the competition can keep going. Also, I'm waiting for these to really come down in price. I mean, $500 is a low price, but I'm waiting to get to the $400 or $300 mark where I think there'll be a lot of people with these devices and really really with a lot of tablets and then the tablets can kind of find its niche because right now it's sort of, I still say it's sort of a novelty device. It has its places in certain areas, but it's not sort of a necessity or really that niche that you need to, that, that, that device that really is going to solve that and it's really worth the money to solve that particular feature. For some people it might be, productivity still isn't there completely at all. It, 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 there's some productivity here, but not real productivity as I will call it. You get a little bit not, you're not really going to get real work done with this. They still got to work on sort of how productivity is going to get into this. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to do that with tablets in general. But overall, like I said, the iPad 2 is a good tablet and definitely the best iOS tablet out there and a good competition for a lot of a lot of the other tablets that are coming out. So this is Bowman here from BW1.com now signing off reminding you to subscribe to our YouTube page, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook and become a fan of our Facebook fan page and always remember to live your tech world in high definition.